السلام علیکم گڈ مارننگ اٹس می ڈاکٹر محمد قذافی اینڈ یو آر واچنگ ڈاکٹر محمد قذافی ویوز اینڈ آئی ایم ٹرائنگ ٹو پریزنٹ ٹو ڈے ون ٹاپک وچ از ویری ویری امپارٹنٹ فرام دا نیو سرجیکل پیشنٹس پوائنٹ آف ویو اینڈ ایون دو فرام دا اف آئی کنسیڈر دیٹ اف آئی وانٹ ٹو سی دیٹ ریگارڈنگ ایون دو دا ایجوکیشنل پرپز it is also a very very important topic so in this regard i want to uh, present that and i want to mention here that uh, as you know uh, the trigeminal neuralgia is one of the most painful neurological condition and definitely only those patient can realize that those have that kind of problem and uh, when they are presenting that and actually as a doctor even though uh, you are um, seeing this kind of problem on a routine basis but definitely you feel very bad for those patients so in that regard i, I want to mention here the trigeminal neuralgia is one of the most painful neurological condition and is often described as a lightning bolt or we can say the stuck on the face or a stabbing sensation on the face indeed such short and uh, lasting and uh, paroxysms of pain occur multiple time throughout the day and debilitating the patient and this condition is almost always unilateral and can involve one or more division of the trigeminal nerve this activity illustrate the evaluation and the management of the trigeminal neuralgia and the highlights the role of the interprofessional team in evaluating managing improving uh, care of the patient with this condition so the trigeminal neuralgia also known as it's tic dolorex and it is a chronic pain condition characterized by a recent brief ep- episode of uh, electric shock like pain and affecting like uh, i can say they are the fifth cranial nerve and which supplies the forehead and cheek and lower jaw this con- this condition is almost always unilateral and can involve one or more division of the trigeminal nerve so trigeminal neuralgia is a syndrome characterized by paroxysmal facial pain and the term tic dolorex was given by the french physician nicolas andre in 1756 because of the facial spasm that can sometime accompany severe pain attacks and etiology that is the trigeminal nerve is the fifth cranial nerve it is responsible for the sensory supply of the face and the motor and the sensory supplies to the muscle of the mastication and the trigeminal nerve is start at the pons and divided into the three branches ophthalmic branch maxillary branch and the mandibular branch ophthalmic supplies the eye upper eyelid and forehead maxillary supplies the lower eyelid cheek nostril upper lip and upper gum mandibular supply the lower lip lower gum jaw and the muscle of the muscles of the mastication the trigeminal nerve start at the pons and most cases of the trigeminal neuralgia are due to the compression of the trigeminal nerve root within a few millimeter of its entry into the pons and between 80 and 90% of the cases of trigeminal neuralgia are caused by compression by an adjacent artery or a vein the blood vessel which has been mostly implicated in about 75 to 80% of cases is the superior cerebellar artery other blood vessels that are known to cause trigeminal include the anterior inferior cerebellar artery and the vertebral artery and the petrocell vein the trigeminal nerve start at the pons and the most cases of the trigeminal neuralgia are due to compression of the trigeminal nerve root within few millimeter 
of its entry into the bones and between 80 to 90 percent of cases trigeminal nerve are caused by compression by an adjacent artery or vein the blood vessel which has been mostly implicated in about 75 to 80 percent of case cases and is the superior and is the superior cerebellar so superior cerebellar artery any superior cerebral uh, cerebellar artery um, and constantly touching uh, the uh, the trigeminal nerve or the branch of the trigeminal nerve and or the other vessel that also known to cause trigeminal neuralgia include that anterior inferior cerebellar artery and the vertebral artery and the petrosal vein and some of other causes of uh, I must say the nerve compression include the meningioma, acoustic neuroma, epidermoid cyst and rarely and I must say the arteriovenous malformation and secular aneurysm. Multiple sclerosis is a risk factor for the trigeminal neuralgia and, and uh, it is reported in about 2% to 4% of patients with trigeminal neuralgia and this is secondary to demyelination of trigeminal nerve nucleus by multiple sclerosis. And you are appreciating here that all three zones, the green zone, it is the ophthalmic zone and here ophthalmic zone V1, also called V1, V1 means actually the V is considered for the Roman word 5 and trigeminal nerve is a fifth cranial nerve. So the V1 that's why I'm telling that um, or we are telling that here the uh, I must say the ophthalmic nerve, uh, the branch of the trigeminal nerve and, and, and the trigeminal nerve is originating from the pons and uh, you are appreciating it is supplying the upper eyelid. Um, uh, and the nostrils, um, sorry, upper eyelid and the forehead mainly, um, the, and also the eye. And you can appreciate the eye conjunctiva also supplied by the ophthalmic nerve. The maxillary artery is supplying the, uh, I must say here, and which is in the pink zone, and you can appreciate here, supplying the lower eyelid, cheek, nostrils, upper lip and the upper gum and and in purple you can realize there's a V3 which is the mandibular one so the mandibular branch supplies the lower lip, lower gum, jaw and the muscles of the mastication and here you can appreciate in purple this is the supply for the mandibular nerve and if you can appreciate this then you can understand this so now i am proceeding towards the epidemiology so the trigeminal neuralgia effect 4 to 13 per 100000 people annually women are affected more compared to the men and the male to female prevalence ratio range from 1 to 1.5 about so it means the females are more affected as compared to the male and the most cases occur after the age of the 50 and the some cases are seen in the second and the third decade and are rarely seen in children so the lifetime prevalence in population based study was estimated to be about point 16% to 0.3% and the development of the trigeminal neuralgia in a young person should raise suspicion of multiple sclerosis and the prevalence of the trigeminal neuralgia in patients with the multiple sclerosis is between 1 and 3.6% and it is also reported that the patient with the hypertension have a slightly higher incidence of the trigeminal neuralgia compared to the general population. And if I want to talk about here you with this picture, you can appreciate that there's the first branch 
and the how the first branch and this is the second branch and this is the third branch and how patient are presenting usually and with this picture just showing that the female prevalence is more as compared to the male but it is not very much high but in both people and uh, means in the male and female it could it could present uh, by that way Regarding the pathophysiology, most cases of trigeminal neuralgia are due to trigeminal nerve compression, and it is believed that trigeminal neuralgia is related to the nerve demyelination occurring around the site of the comparison, uh, the compression, and the mechanism of how demyelination lead to the symptoms of trigeminal neuralgia is not known, and it is thought to be due to ectopic impulse generation set up by the demyelinated lesion thereby causing apathic transmission and the apathic link between the fiber involved in pain generation and fiber mediating light touch could account for the participation of the or precipitation of a shock like pain and you can appreciate here there is a shock like pain when i mention the word the bolt of lightning it is you can appreciate the bolt of lightning and the uh, here or again mentioning the female patient but it is not because it's the only females are affected actually the females affect more that's why it is mentioning here the female uh, presentation and you can appreciate here being stepped by a um, by a you can see this is the uh, this is the ice pick it like that and you can see the electric shock and i think this picture if you can memorize this picture you can understand what kind of the intense intermittent pain along the course of the nerve and it can affect any nerve uh, uh, any branch of the trigeminal nerve uh, either the ophthalmic either the maxillary either the mandibular it it can affect any and you can appreciate here there is a uh there is a, the, the the arteries are responsible they are uh, 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 over that the superior cerebellar artery anterior inferior cerebellar artery petrosal vein so these are the arteries may affect and the demyelination you know on, uh, around the site of compression uh, especially in the multiple sclerosis and the mechanism of how demyelination lead to the symptom of trigeminal uh, nerve is also known it is thought to be due to the ectopic impulse generation set up by the demyelination lesion and thereby causing the apathic transmission and apathic link between the fiber involved in the pain generation and the fiber mediating light touch could account for the precipitation of a shock like pain in the facial trigger zone by the light tactile stimulation a trigger episode followed by the refractory episode and the Um, and, and the single stimulus lead to the painful sensation indicate the possible role of the central pain mechanism in trigeminal neuralgia altered gray matter in the sensory and the motor cortex has also has also been described here and some theories describe the demyelination secondary or vascular compression of the nerve so definitely a trigger episode followed by the refractory period and the single stimulate single stimulus lead to the painful sensation indicate the possible role of the central pain mechanism in trigeminal neuralgia and uh, you know that the altered gray matter in the sensory and the motor cortex has also been described so uh, and uh, um, as you notice that there some theory describe the demyelination secondary to the vascular compression of the nerve root by the tortuous or aberrant vessel and radiological and pathological studies have described the proximity of the trigeminal nerve root uh, to such vessels and the vessels mostly implicated in the superior cerebellar artery and this hypothesis is further strengthened by relief of symptom and following surgeries to separate the offending vessel from the nerve so according to the bio bio, bio resonance uh, 
hypothesis when the vibration frequency of the trigeminal nerve and the surrounding structure uh, come close to each other the trigeminal nerve fiber are damaged and, 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 and leading to abnormal transmission of impulse thereby resulting in facial pain. And this picture actually telling by itself there is a thousand words and you can appreciate here you can appreciate very well how the vessels are affecting here the vertebral artery even though can do superior cerebellar artery um, and, uh, uh, anterior inferior cerebellar artery petrosal nerve can cause the and it is uh, affecting mainly uh, the trigeminal nerve and this tortuous uh, anatomy of these vessel or the aberrant anatomy of these vessel constantly uh, when they are um, uh, over the ner uh, nerve um, uh, so then it is causing the demyelination and it is a very chronic and the constant effect uh, of these vessels and that's why they are doing like that and this bioresonance hypothesis is uh, because the vibration frequency of the trigeminal nerve and the surrounding structure come close to each other so the trigeminal nerve fibers are damaged and leading to the abnormal transmission of impulse and thereby resulting in a facial pain so the multiple other condition like the amyloid infiltration bony compression arteriovenous malformation and the small infarcts in the medulla and the palms uh, have been described to cause the trigeminal neuralgia. Uh, uh, now, classification trigeminal neuralgia is divided into classic trigeminal neuralgia, secondary trigeminal neuralgia, or I must say um, the idiopathic trigeminal neuralgia. And here in this uh, picture it is uh, showing that like a possible trigeminal neuralgia actually this is a secondary trigeminal neuralgia so regarding the classic trigeminal neuralgia this include trigeminal neuralgia related to the vascular compression as I mentioned uh, before that the, the few now few examples I put in front of you such as the superior cerebellar artery, anterior inferior cerebral artery, vertebral artery, petrosal nerve uh, may cause effect and this vibration theory support that and even because of these vessels then these kind of uh, trigeminal neuralgia are considered as a tri classic trigeminal neuralgia and um, uh, 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 and the attacks uh, uh, attacks uh, uh, are proximal paroxysmal sorry paroxysmal and uh, associated with the triggered mechanism stimuli and the diagnosis confirmed by the magnetic resonance imaging studies and most common neurovascular compression and you can appreciate with that so the diagnosis confirmed by the magnetic resonance imaging studies and I, I will tell in detail when we are talking about the evaluation of how we are evaluating uh, the trigeminal neuralgia uh, and the most common neurovascular compression. If, if I may consider the possible trigeminal neuralgia here, which we, I, I must say this is, I can say the secondary trigeminal neuralgia, this includes due to the tumor along the trigeminal nerve or trigeminal neuralgia due to an underlying disease like the multiple sclerosis. So here you can say it is also paroxysmal in nature and the component of continuous pain may exist not triggered by the mechanical stimulation like the external touch or oral movement and uh, this is called like that. And uh, the classification also mentioned here the idiopathic trigeminal neuralgia this is when the cause is unknown uh, may be triggered by the extra uh, or the external stimuli we don't know MRI does not show any neurovascular conflict and the associated with the cerebral uh, pontine uh, angle lesion or multiple sclerosis here uh, it could be like that 
so it is a presentation like that and i want to present here here you can see the classical trigeminal neuralgia classic purely paroxysmal uh, trigeminal neuralgia classic classic trigeminal neuralgia with concomitant permanent facial pain and uh, painful other one is a painful trigeminal uh, neuropathy which i must say the painful trigeminal neuropathy attributed to acute herpes zoster or or the post herpetic trigeminal neuropathy post traumatic painful trigeminal neuropathy trigeminal painful neuropathy attributed to the multiple sclerosis trigeminal neuropathy attributed to the injury occupying space or the trigeminal neuropathy attributed to the other uh, other disorder so this is uh, everything came in the infective part came like a herpes zoster or the uh, which we acute herpes zoster or the herpetic post herpetic trigeminal neuralgia then trauma traumatic part also came in that so these are the secondary or we can mention here tri secondary uh, reasons and uh, here the multiple sclerosis you can appreciate here you can appreciate the the space occupying lesion and uh, like that here the idiopathy is a sharp shooting electric shock like episodic pain aching throbbing burning 50% constant pain trigeminal injury unintentional facial trauma uh, oral op ear nose throat op skull base op posterior fossa op or the stroke uh, trigeminal neuropathic pain Uh, the idiopathic or intentional neuro uh, neurectomy uh, ganglioglias rhizotomy nucleo uh, nucleotomy tractotomy or the other denervating procedure associated with the multiple sclerosis resulting from the outbreak of the facial herpes zoster uh, somatoform pain disorder or or an uh, symptomatic trigeminal neuralgia post herpetic trigeminal neuralgia atypical facial pain trigeminal deafferentiation pain so there is a you know that when we are defining the symptomatology and uh, definitely the trigeminal trigeminal injury happen like unintentional facial trauma or um, or, 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 or oral operation ear nose throat skull base uh, operation or the posterior fossa operation or the stroke or the in, in, intentional neurectomy ganglioglias rhizotomy nucleotomy tractotomy or the other denervating procedure e, e associated with the multiple sclerosis and resulting from the outbreak of the facial herpes zoster acute or the post herpetic uh, infection somatoform pain disorder uh, so these are so these all are so I, if i can uh, divide into the tumor neck sorry trigeminal neuralgia one or two so by idiopathic i can divide into the sharp shooting electric shock like pain episodic it is one and aching throbbing burning or a constant pain it is called the two and uh, so these are all 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 you and it is the diagnostic classification and the by symptomatological classification and people are understanding by regarding the history and the physical examination considering the symptomatic aspect trigeminal neuralgia can classify as type 1 which is the which is the presence of the which i mentioned before the paroxysmal pain alone or and it is a, a sharp shooting pain and it is episodic in type 2 it is the paroxysmal pain along with the constant and along with the constant pain burning sensation and uh, in uh, in the background and the pain in the trigeminal neuralgia occur in when a paroxysm and usually maximal or sorry at or near onset sometime with severe pain and the facial muscle spasm can be seen so the trigeminal neuralgia is also known as a tic dolorex uh, so the majority of the patient describe the pain as electric shock like pain and lasting for one or 
uh, one or a several seconds and pain in trigeminal neuralgia is typical unilateral and occasionally it is bilateral but very rarely occur simultaneously on both sides and the pain episode rarely occur during B sleep. So the V2 and V3 division of the trigeminal nerve are usually involved in the pain distribution and when uh, or, or, or when the uh, V1 subdivision is involved, so the mild autonomic symptom like lacrimation, rhinorrhea, and conjectival injection can be seen. So, however, isolated uh, V1 division involvement is very rare, and it is seen in less than less than five percent of the patient with like that. So the V2 or V3, it means the maxillary and the mandibular, both M arteries. M means uh, M for maxillary, M for mandibular. So these are these nerves are uh, or the these divisions of the or these branches of the trigeminal nerve are usually involved in the in the main distribution uh, in, in the main pain distribution. Uh, and when we are topic, talking about the ophthalmic, so the ophthalmic subdivision involved uh, mild autonomic symptom like lacrimation, rhinorrhea, and um, conjunctival inje injection can be seen. However, isolated, um, and, uh, isolated. If I consider the ophthalmic division involvement, is very very rare, and it is seen in less than uh, five percent of the patient. So, trigger zone may be present in the distribution of the affected nerve and these are uh, usually, and uh, this picture I chose especially for this trigger, I want to describe this trigger zone. So, trigger zone you can see there, uh, and, uh, you can appreciate in a circle, there is an um, artery or a vessel, I may uh, generalize with that, and uh, the yellow one, the red one is a vessel, uh, most mostly artery and here mentioning the artery and uh, yellow one in that circle you can appreciate the definitely the trigeminal nerve and uh, this is uh, affecting and constantly over the nerve uh, so that's why this is causing when the every beat of heart and when the blood is flowing from there there's a definitely a, some vibration there and this vibration hypothesis is getting popular because of uh, this thing so it, the trigger zone may be present in the distribution of the affected nerve and these are usually located near the midline usually these trigger zones are usually in the midline and they have been mostly reported in the um, nasal and perioral region and um, so when you touch sometime or something happen then the pain will start in the nasal area or the perioral area the trigeminal neuralgia pain is triggered by uh, by lightly touching these zones and patient with the trigeminal neuralgia are usually aware of these zones and avoid any stimulation of them and all patient with the trigeminal neuralgia May not may not have the trigger zone, but the trigger zones are uh, nearly pathognomonic of the trigeminal neuralgia. Other triggers reported causing trigeminal neuralgia paroxysm include brushing teeth, shaving, washing of the face, smoking, chewing, choking, grisming, or exposure of the cold air. In younger patient, who patient with the symptoms of the trigeminal neuralgia, other neurological conditions like multiple sclerosis should merit consideration in the differential and such patients should be asked about other neurological symptoms like uh, focal weakness, uh, vision changes, dizziness, and ataxia. So in younger patient who, who present with the uh, uh, with the symptom of the trigeminal neuralgia, other neurological condition like multiple sclerosis and uh, should merit consideration in differential and such patients should be asked about the other neurological symptom like uh, focal weakness, uh, vision changes, dizziness and ataxia. And in patient with the trigeminal neuralgia, 
the physical examination is generally normal and um, hence the physical if the physician should perform a detailed physical examination of the head neck eyes ears teeth mouth and the temporomandibular joint to rule out other causes of the facial pain the finding of typical trigger zone is suggestive of trigeminal neuralgia and as i mentioned before the said patient should be asked about the other neurological symptom like focal weakness or vision changes or dizziness or ataxia so in patient with the classical trigeminal neuralgia the ne the neurological examination is normal and the physical examination shows a sensory loss in the trigeminal nerve distribution and loss of the corneal reflex or weakness in the facial muscle should prompt the physician to consider the secondary trigeminal neuralgia or the other differential and several patient with trigeminal neuralgia complain of a toothache and the pain with brushing teeth uh, a detailed oral examination can help in differentiating the the dental causes of pain from the trigeminal neuralgia in this picture i it is very much explanatory by itself and you can see there is a is a u shaped uh, uh, artery over the nerve and it is uh, causing um, i must say the vibration uh, th vibration theory or vibration hypothesis and here this superior cerebellar artery um, affecting over the trigeminal nerve and uh, you can appreciate here the cerebellum and the refractor has been applied over here that's why i took this picture to explain this now we are going towards the evaluation regarding the evaluation trigeminal neuralgia is usually diagnosed based on the history and the description of the symptoms by the patient for patients with clinical suspected trigeminal neuralgia it is recommended to have neuroimaging studies to distinguish classic trigeminal neuralgia from secondary trigeminal neuralgia mri of brain is preferred over ct as the mri help in evaluating the small edges and lesion as well and these are the certain diagnostic criteria established by the uh, by the icd3 which can help in the diagnosis of trigeminal neuralgia and these criteria are as follows uh, the recurrent paroxysms of the facial pain unilaterally in the distribution of the trigeminal nerve and fulfilling the criteria uh, b and c and pain has the following characteristic and the pain lasting a fraction of second to about 2 minutes and pain with severe intensity and the electric shock like a shooting pain with the sharp quality and the inoc uh, or we can say the uh, innocuous stimuli participate the pain in the affected distribution no alternative or i must say there is the icd3 diagnostic better explain the symptoms so in this picture i just kept and here there the you can appreciate there the marker and uh, you can appreciate here there is um, uh, the circle has red circle has been made and here uh, the artery uh, over the trigeminal nerve and here you can appreciate this the pontine area and uh, the exiting uh, the trigeminal nerve or entering the trigeminal nerve here uh, 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 so you can see that the artery is going over that and this is uh, very much suggestive uh, and, uh, to diagnose uh, this thing but definitely here the trigeminal neuralgia is usually diagnosed based on the history and the description of the symptom by the patient because but the now the new era has been came and the mri of the brain is preferred over the ct scan as the mri help in evaluating the small adjacent lesion as well 
and these are the certain diagnostic care criteria established by the ICHD3 which can help in the diagnosis of the trigeminal in, in, in neuralgia and the criteria I mentioned earlier before the A of this the recurrent paroxysm of the facial pain unilaterally in the distribution of the trigeminal nerve and fulfilling the criteria. The second is the pain has the following uh, characteristic pain along the fraction of a second to about two minutes and pain with the severe intensity and the electric shock like a shooting pain with the sharp quality and this innocuous stimuli and precipitate the pain in the effect distribution and no alternative ICHD3 diagnosis better explain the symptom and the subtype of trigeminal, trigeminal neuralgia are defined by the I must say there they say the I, ICHD as follows so these three things I want to mention here this innocuous stimuli participate the pain is effect distribution and pain with the intensity and the severity, electric shock like pain, shooting pain, pain lasting the fraction of the second to about uh, two minutes. So these are all very, very important uh, uh, things which we have to, uh, and I actually no alternative of ICHD3 diagnosis better explain the symptom. But the subtype of trigeminal neuralgia are defined by the ICHD as follows like that, the classic, secondary, and uh, I must say the idiop idiopathic. The classic trigeminal neuralgia, this is secondary uh, to the neuromuscular compression and fulfilling the criteria above this uh, required demonstration of compression on MRI as is mentioned here in this picture or during the surgery for neuromuscular compression with associated morphological changes in the trigeminal nerve root. And the secondary trigeminal neuralgia, this is defined as trigeminal neuralgia secondary to an underlying disease. And some of the reported causes are in secondary one, you can see there, you can appreciate the multiple sclerosis, arteriovenous malformation, and cerebellar pontine angle tumor, such as, uh, you know, the schwannoma or dermoid, epidermoid, or other. So idiopathic, this is defined or meningioma there. And, and idiopathic trigeminal neuralgia is defined as there the no abnormality seen, no abnormality seen in the MRI or electrophysiological test. So the neuroimaging study like MRI brain or CT head can help in identifying the causes like cerebellopontine angle tumor or multiple sclerosis and which can cause secondary. and which can cause secondary. So the neuroimaging like uh, MRI brain or CT head can help in identifying the cause like uh, cerebellopontine angle tumor or multiple sclerosis. So which can cause the secondary trigeminal neuralgia and magnetic resonance imaging or high resolution MRI can help in identifying vascular compression as the cause of the classic uh, a targeted MRI which is a high resolution MRI can be performed with or without gadolinium contrast and this can give a detailed picture of the blood vessels and the brain as you can appreciate here and this is called the uh, Fiesta uh, a sequence in some MRI machine and in these, in, in these machines and uh, sections as thin as one millimeter can be taken in a coronal plane without any skip in between the images and this way the imaging of the entire course of trigeminal nerve can be obtained and offending vessels causing compression can be identified. Hence the uh, trigeminal neuralgia is a clinical diagnosis as I mentioned before definitely we are relying on the IEC HD3 but you have to understand that with the clinical diagnosis an MRI of brain with or without contrast is recommended is recommendation to rule out a structural brain lesion in all patients with clinically suspected trigeminal neuralgia and it is also important 
to note that the patient less than 40 years of age, patient with bilateral symptoms and with sensory loss on physical examination are at higher risk of the secondary trigeminal neuralgia. Now I want to talk about the treatment. The management option for the, the patient with the trigeminal neuralgia depends on the variety of factors including the age, general health, disease severity and underlying cause. The decision should be taken after a thorough discussion with the patient and other doctors involved in the care of the patient. The pharmacological therapy is definitely important here and uh, in this picture you can appreciate there is a uh, there is a prescription by the name of the prescription medication and uh, you know that there is a uh, uh, this is a pharmacological therapy. In the first line treatment for the patient with the classic trigeminal neuralgia and the idiopathic trigeminal neuralgia is pharmacological therapy and the most commonly used medication is the anticonvulsant drug carbamazepine. It is usually started at a low dose and, uh, 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 and the dose is gradually increased until it controls the pain and, uh, 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 and it controls pain for most people in the early stage of the disease. However, in some patients, the effectiveness of the carbamazepine decreases over time. Possible side effects of the carbamazepine include drowsiness, dizziness, double vision, and nausea. In patients of Asian ancestry, before starting carbamazepine, testing for the HLA-B LA is recommended as it presents increase the risk of the development of a toxic epidermal neurolysis or Steven Johnson syndrome. So, as, you men as I mentioned before, the first line for the health with the uh, with the classic trigeminal neuralgia and the idiopathic trigeminal neuralgia is a pharmacological therapy and the most commonly we are using the medication is the anticonvulsant drugs such as the carbamazepine and it usually started at low dose and the dose is gradually increased until it controls the pain. It controls the pain for the most people in early stage of disease however in some patients the effect is effectiveness the effectiveness of the carbamazepine decreases over time and the possible side effect of the carbamazepine include drowsiness, dizziness, double vision and the nausea. So in patient of the Asian ancestry before starting the carbamazepine, testing the HLA-B LL is recommended and it is presence increase the risk of the development of toxic epidermal necrolysis or the Steven Johnson syndrome. So it's a very, very important thing. Oscarbazimazepine is a newer drug and uh, being increasingly used as a first therapy for trigeminal neuralgia in patients who do not respond to or who cannot tolerate carbamazepine. So the possible side effects include the double vision and the dizziness and it can also cause hyponatremia. So it should be avoided in patient with HLA and B and 15 and 15 LL. Baclofen is a muscle relaxant that can be used to treat the trigeminal neuralgia side effect include the, the, the dizziness, sedation and the dyspepsia. Uh, uh, dizziness, sedation and dyspepsia could be because of the baclofen. Uh, it is a muscle relaxant, but people are using that. Other medications include the limetrogene, phenytoin, gabapentin, clonazepam, valparic acid. Newer drugs like the SD carbamazepine, active metabolite of the ox carbamazepine, and it is a newer uh, available drug. Or I want to mention here. And uh, vixotrigine are being explored for the pain relief in trigeminal neuralgia. So the patient with secondary to trigeminal neuralgia also can respond well to, far, uh, to the pharmacotherapy. However, it is recommended to treat the underlying lesion or disease. Botulinum toxin injection, this can be beneficial 
uh, for some patient particularly to the middle age and the elderly who are refractory to medical therapy or who cannot tolerate medical therapy due to its side effects. Surgical therapy, it is a part of the treatment here and uh, uh, you, uh, you can appreciate here there is a neuromuscular, decomp sorry, microvascular decompression. Um, and uh, this microvascular decompression is one of the most common procedure used to treat trigeminal neuralgia and this is beneficial for patients with a trigeminal neuralgia where compression of the nerve root is the cause uh, and the involving craniotomy and the post fossa exploration for identifying and moving the blood vessel that is and a compression or compressing the trigeminal nerve a soft cushion is often inserted between the nerve and the vessel to allow the nerve to recover which eventually relieve the pain in some patient this procedure can result in sustained pain relief to to greater than the 10 years though it is the most effective procedure it is also the most invasive one so some of the complication associated with it are decreased hearing, cerebellar hematoma, CSF leak, infarction and facial weakness. So it is believable to be the most effective long term surgical treatment available currently for the patient with trigeminal neuralgia. The other procedure is the ablative procedure which is mentioning here and uh, I must say uh, it is mentioning here and this ablative procedure include the rhizotomy and this rhizotomy with the thermocoagulation and the chemical injection with alcohol or mechanical balloon compression so these procedure involve damaging the trigeminal nerve root uh, thereby interrupting the pain transmission signal to the brain and the rhizotomy with thermocoagulation uses an electrode to apply heat to damage the nerve fiber and the chemical rhizotomy involve injecting the chemical glycerol into the trigeminal nerve thereby damaging it the balloon compression involving inserting a tiny balloon to the point of the location of nerve fiber and this balloon uh, on inflation damaging the nerve fiber and some of the associated complication uh, are post-operative dysesthesia, corneal numbness, sensory loss, and trigeminal nerve disturbance distribution and anesthesia dolorosa. So this balloon or inflation dam uh, damages the nerve fiber but some of the associated completion with the post-operative dysesthesia. I, I want to repeat this that the corneal numbness, sensory loss in uh, trigeminal nerve dist uh, distribution and anesthesia dolorosa. The radio surgery, radio surgery is, uh, is an option. Radio surgery is the option of treatment and this procedure involves usually uh, using the radio surgery instrumentation and this is a non-invasive procedure where in highly concentrated dose of ionizing radiation is delivered to a precise target at the trigeminal nerve root and the radiation create a lesion near the nerve root thereby interrupting the pain signal from transmission to the brain and the formation of the lesion can be slow and hence the pain relief using this procedure is delayed by up to several weeks or months and this is one of the least invasive procedure it can be repeated in patient who have recurrence of pain and some of the associated complication can be facial sensory loss and paresthesia. So the radio surgery definitely has its role and it is non-invasive and uh, highly concentrated dose of the annual radiation we have to put over that and this formation of lesion can be slow but here the pain relief you, you, and using this procedure is delayed because there is a several weeks or months required to it start the effect and this is one of the, the least invasive procedure but it is also some of the associated complication can be the sensory, facial sensory loss and paresthesia is still there even though non-invasive. 
or i might say there is a, definitely it is a, actually not non invasive but virtually it is somehow invasive regarding the radiation peripheral neurectomy and the nerve block this neurectomy can be performed on peripheral branches of the trigeminal nerve like supraorbital infraorbital lingual and the alveolar nerve and this can be accomplished by alcohol injection incision cryotherapy radio frequency lesioning peripheral neurectomy can be safe in elderly patient in remote and the rural area where the neurosurgical facilities are not readily available however evidence regarding these peripheral technique for trigeminal neuralgia is still unconclusive but people are doing and definitely there is that's why here the mentioning you can appreciate here how the teflon has been separating the artery and the nerve uh, in this picture and it is just for the demonstration that when the surgery surgically doing that uh, treatment of such patient so then we are using that this teflon here in this picture you can appreciate the teflon how there the teflon is mentioned here the nerve you can appreciate the artery you can appreciate and the teflon in between you can appreciate so you can understand very well how it effect or how it treat uh, uh, helping to treat such problems and when i was talking about the treatment i mentioned the the ablation and you can appreciate from the foramen of oval how we can go inside and uh, with thermo thermocoagulation or uh, alcohol ablation chemical ablation uh, help us and the needle in the cheek and then uh, from the cheek uh, you can appreciate we can go uh, at the angle of mouth from 2 to 3 cm uh, away from the angle of mouth and then go Uh, straight and it is uh, when uh, taking us to the foramen oval, and here the trigeminal ganglion. We hit the trigeminal ganglion, and uh, especially when we are hitting it, usually we are hitting it the lower part in the mandibular area and the some part of the uh, some part of the of the maxillary area, and uh, you can appreciate uh, uh, how we are treating that. and uh, it is uh, i think very good picture to explain uh, 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 for the educational even though the patient's point of view and patient can understand how this procedure uh, has been done and they can uh, they can understand with this picture this is one more picture i want to present to explain how we are using this uh, radio uh, uh, sorry and uh, an uh, ablation surgeries or the ablation procedures this picture is suggestive for the gamma knife uh, uh, gamma knife use and you can appreciate here there the root you can see and and there is a sternal 90 gyrons and here the 80 gyrons over the root And, uh, with the radio surgery but you know it takes more time but this picture with i will explain you how the radio surgery work and then you can appreciate here now i want to come over the differential diagnosis and i want to present the uh, the differential diagnosis here regarding the differential diagnosis a good history and the physical examination can help in differentiating trigeminal neuralgia from other similar condition such as the post herpetic neuralgia and this condition or uh, this is the secondary to the so regarding the differential diagnosis a, a good history and the physical examination can help in differentiating trigeminal neuralgia from the others or the other condition but the post herpetic neuralgia this is secondary to the acute herpes zoster this usually present with the 
severe preceding rash on often involve the first division of the trigeminal nerve and the pain is usually continuous and this trigeminal pain is intermittent and last a few seconds dental pain this is usually continuous and the intraoral pain which can be dull or throbbing trigeminal neuralgia pain is usually sharp intermittent and electric shock like and also abnormalities are found in oral examination of the pain is from a dental source so the dental you can you have to differentiate because done in a dental one is a dental pain is usually dull and throbbing and uh, is usually well a trigeminal neuralgia pain is sharp intermittent and electric shock like so this is the differentiation and, and abnormality are found on oral examination of pain is from the dental source and definitely this is uh, if i as i mentioned before that the herpes zoster it is two kinds of the herpes zoster one is um, a post herpetic and other one is a acute herpes zoster and uh, the post herpetic uh, is a also present and but both are almost same and involving more over the uh, with the preceding rashes and uh, definitely more over on the first division of the trigeminal nerve and often is usually continuous and trigeminal neuralgia pain is intermittent and last a few seconds uh, short lasting unilateral uh, neuralgia or we can say the neuralgia from headache attacks or we can say suna because i am telling a short lasting s unilateral u uh, neuralgia form and headache attack suna this is a short lasting unilateral neuralgia form headache attack with a conjunctival injection and, and tearing and these present as a sudden brief attack of a unilateral pain in orbital periorbital and temporal region ipsilateral uh, autonomic symptom also accompany these so the trigeminal neuropathy is a condition present with the persistent pain and can be associated with sensory loss and temporomandibular joint syndrome this condition present with the persistent pain uh, localized tenderness and the jaw abnormality can be uh, demonstrated um, glossopharyngeal neuralgia patient present with the pain in a uh, tongue and this in uh, a uh, tongue mouth uh, and the throat uh, so uh, th this is also uh, here that i want to mention the glossopharyngeal neuralgia is a uh, definitely very near to the trigeminal neuralgia but a little difference is there the tongue mouth and throat and pain is triggered by chewing talking and swallowing the prognosis regarding the prognosis trigeminal neuralgia is not a life threatening condition however it can lead to lifelong pain and can be disabling and the course of trigeminal neuralgia is variable some patient may have an episode lasting week or month and followed by a pain free interval and some patient have a persistent background facial pain concomitant with the trigeminal neuralgia and in some patient the pain attack worsen over time and with fewer and shorter pain relief interval before they are recur and also the medication might lose effectiveness over the time and the current diagnosis and the proper management can be beneficial to the patient and leads to a good prognosis uh, regarding the complication the pain in trigeminal neuralgia is so severe and debilitating that the patient can develop depression if not adequately treated patient with the severe pain associated with the facial twitching can become socially withdrawn due to embarrassment and a fear of a impending attack a uh, patient treated with the anticonvulsant drug over the long term can have a adverse drug effect and the microvascular decompression and the percutaneous neurosurgical procedure can pose surgical risk and some patient permanently develop the facial numbness on the affected side and occasionally patient develop the corneal anesthesia 
or jaw weakness and the anesthesia dolorosa is seen in a few patients it is an intractable facial dysarthria or dysesthesia which can be more disabling uh, than the original one so regarding these complications as i mentioned before they all kind of treatment has some kind of complication and we have to make a balance over it then we have to perform or advise that kind of treatment and when patient is choosing that we have to help him to choose a proper kind of treatment which can um, be helpful for his life and to deal that such kind of a problem of the uh, other problems of this disease although the primary care provide can be diagnosis and the initial treatment of a trigeminal neuralgia a referral to the general neuralgia may be necessary to identify possible secondary cause like uh, a multiple sclerosis arteriovenous malformation and cerebellopontine uh, tumor consultation with the neurosurgeon or a neurovascular surgeon is uh, warranted for patient who are refractory to the medical therapy to uh, assess the necessity of the neuro uh, neurovascular decompression or other neurosurgical procedure deterrence in the patient education regarding the timely diagnosis and the management of the trigeminal neuralgia are essential and the pain is severe and can be can be debilitating and affect the quality of the life so patient should be informed about the condition and patient should be educated about the course of this condition and the various therapeutic options available and patient should be made aware of the risk of the long term anticonvulsant therapy and also the risk associated with the surgical option for trigeminal neuralgia and this can help the patient in making an informed decision pulse if i say the important thing regarding this patient trigeminal neuralgia is a chronic pain condition and the presence with the unilateral facial pain the pain in the trigeminal neuralgia usually described as a sharp electric shock like a stabbing or a lacerating pain in distribution of one or more division of trigeminal nerve and the majority of the cases trigeminal neuralgia are due to the neurovascular compression although the trigeminal neuralgia is a clinical diagnosis neuroimaging study is recommended in all patient with clinical suspected in trigeminal neuralgia to differentiate the classic trigeminal neuralgia from secondary trigeminal neuralgia and the carbamazepine and the carbamazepine is a first line medication in the treatment of the trigeminal neuralgia neuro vascular decompression is one of the most effective surgical modality for the treatment of the trigeminal neuralgia and uh, the trigeminal neuralgia uh, as we know uh, is free fr frequently misdiagnosed as a tooth ache thereby leading to the root canal treatment and the tooth extraction and the physician need to aware of these condition and the interprofessional approach between the primary care physician dentist neurologist neurosurgeon anesthesiologist is necessary to recognize and manage this condition otolaryngology and the pain control nurses provide care to patient inform them about their condition and communicate with the physician and since medical management is the typical first step the pharmacist consult is, is in order to help guide agent selection and verify dosing and check for the drugs interaction and the counsel of the patient on medication side effects uh, actually and uh, i want to a brief uh, i want to extend briefly this lecture with the some one case for the analogy and it is yes you know there is a 58 year old woman present with the right sided facial pain described as a shocking sensation that uh, uh, shoot from her ear to her jaw and the first episode occurred without warning four years ago and she had a uh, several episode at that time but the pain went away without intervention and it returned several month later and lasting second to a few minutes at a time and then subsiding completely it can be triggered by eating talking and touching her cheek and uh, she was uh, prescribed carbamazepine which initially uh, eliminate her symptom in the last few month however 
she has had more frequent episodes despite increased the dose and she is now able unable to talk about the triggering the pain the past medical history no surgery or trauma to the head and neck no history of the visual or sensory changes no history of transit neurological deficits uh, like that and the differential diagnosis here um, the neoplastic uh, uh, tumor uh, atypical facial pain that is a constant unilateral and associated with the numbness uh, and we know uh, could be the infectious as I mentioned and a post-herpetic neuralgia or vascular AVM or multiple sclerosis but here uh, the imaging we did in, in a good clinical examination has been done detailed clinical clinical history has been taken then MRI has been done and, um, and a 3D CD re, CT reconstruction where a CTA done um, and uh, which is showing there is um, um, uh, I must say there is a, a superior cerebellar artery was uh, uh, crossing over the right trigeminal nerve root uh, at the entry point and uh, this was the entry zone and uh, there's a high resolution we have BFFE sequence uh, we did for it and um, uh, but uh, because of the some uh, copyright reasons I cannot uh, present my uh, and, uh, I must share the, the hospital pictures but I, I I took this picture from the book and I want to present it. As I mentioned, I cannot present my patient's picture because of the hospital uh, some strict policy here where I am working. So there I can present uh, there the same kind of a sequence we did and you can appreciate here uh, there is a uh, and I mentioned before in the lecture deliberately you can see the superior cerebral artery here and uh, here uh, also mentioning the, the right side affected more so this area was affected more even though the left side was suspicious suspicious but the right side affected more and uh, here you can appreciate there is a uh, the, this is a bff sequence and uh, <coughs> the further work of the routine pre-operative lab done and try and the pathophysiology we already discussed in detail but the try what we were discussing here the trigeminal neuralgia you know there the clinical diagnosis based on the spontaneous development of pain within the distribution of the trigeminal nerve v2 v3 most common and the type 1 classic uh, or a classic trigeminal is characterized by uh, lancetting and a shock like pain whereas the type 2 trigeminal neuralgia is predominantly in a constant aching pain and the ignition theory of the trigeminal neuralgia describe a focus of the hyperactivity within the retrogression route associated with the focal demyelination and the focal injury lead to the hyper excitability of afferent resulting in the after discharge significant enough to be perceive a pain and such injury is often associated with a neurovascular compression and um, although trigeminal neuralgia occur and recur in the absence of the neurovascular uh, compression. So the most common artery involved in the trigeminal neuralgia is the superior cerebellar artery, but any artery or vein contact with the nerve can cause either maybe the an anterior inferior cerebellar artery or the vertebral artery or the petrosal uh, vein. So the other cause of the fa facial pain must be ruled out including the multiple sclerosis and other demyelinating disease, tumor and the vascular malformation. Trigeminal neuralgia caused by a vascular compression mostly spares facial sensation whereas the multiple sclerosis and the tumor do not. But the treat route or treatment options in our case definitely we use the medical treatment and then uh, um, we were we discussed the we, we discussed with the patient the radiation therapy such as the gamma knife uh, radiation uh, therapy uh, uh, so here and, uh, and we discuss uh, everything with the patient and uh, after discussing that and a patient has decided uh, so uh, even though we explained him the percutaneous ablative procedure and, and then at the garrison ganglion um, as a safe and effective when a chemo ablation with the alcohol and glycerol 
and mechanical disruption with balloon compression and the radio frequency and this uh, thermoablation are commonly used approach and the craniotomy neurovascular decompression is also we discussed and bd uh, microvascular decompression but uh, and, uh, to decompress the neurovascular compression uh, with the teflon uh, but uh, uh, or the rhizotomy we offer them everything we offer to the patient because we could do that uh, as a team but the but the patient uh, chose there is a uh, the, the the percutaneous procedure so the procedure was performed under fluoroscope guidance with iv sedation under anesthesia and the radio frequency ablation is the most commonly performed procedure especially for pain in v2 v3 not v1 and is described here uh, 22 gauge needle 10 cm refractory sorry radio frequency cannula uh, is uh, cannula uh, is introduced into a, a 0.2 to 3 cm lateral to and 1 cm inferior to the camisura uh, labialis uh, and it is directed towards the pupil at a pupil at the 0.3 cm anterior to the external um, uh, anterior to the 3 cm anterior to the um, uh, to the external auditory meatus and by and the and the sub mentorox or oblique Submental fluoroscope view can be used to visualize the foramen ovale. Uh, once uh, uh, within uh, uh, the foramen, the straight lateral view is used to confirm location within the macal scape, and cannula is advanced such that the tip of the electrode uh, is located in the junction of the petrous ridge and the clivus and um, the stimulation at uh, 50 hertz for a one millisecond um, uh, with uh, uh, should produce a paresthesia at 1.1 to 1.5 v within the desired distribution nerve and the needle reposition may be necessary when location is confirmed so the thermoablation at 70 degrees for 90 seconds is performed with the patient sedated and adequate lesioning has been confirmed by the loss of a pin pin and a pin prick discrimination in the targeted distribution and um, uh, and the needle is withdrawn and then intraoperative hypertension is not frequent so this is the percutaneous procedure and a patient accepted by all the procedure and here and uh, definitely and uh, one other patient, uh, and, uh, he he accepted. And uh, but I want to mention here uh, one picture from a book. And this picture you can appreciate here. It is uh, and, uh, to target the garrison ganglion in the macal scape and how the needle has been advanced and uh, the location area. As I mentioned before, there are the three centimeter. Um, uh, 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 lateral and one centimeter inferior to the uh, lateral and a kamush kamush kamushura labial eye and uh, then um, and, uh, three centimeter anterior to the directed uh, direct toward the pupil and three centimeter anterior to the external auditory meatus and then uh, it advanced and once it uh, once it's advanced and the confirmation by the we are giving the 50 hertz uh, 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 stimulus for a one millisecond and then the patient is confirming that then we are at re reposition or advancing the nerve sorry the needle as per need and then we are doing that so here uh, now i want to mention here one thing regarding one more patient we treated and uh, because i want to present uh, not i don't want i don't want to go in detail and that patient uh, because uh, we offered him because the ablation has been failed on other patient and once the ablation has been failed then we advise him okay, you take the chance of the MBD and uh, he took the chance of MBD and we put and we did how the position can be supine and we put in we, we, we put in a 
supine, supine, and and, um, and or or you can mention, you can say the the a semi lateral position, or you must say the lateral with the um, with the air parallel to the floor and um, head flexed slightly, to twenty to thirty degrees, um, and uh, B A E R and the facial nerve monitoring. Uh, 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 monitoring are confirmed prior to the incision and retrosegmoid craniotomy uh, or you can say the craniectomy has been performed to expose the junction of the transverse at the junction of the transverse and the sigmoid sinus and dura is opened in the curvilinear um, in a fashion parallel to these structure and avoiding the, to touch or hit the, the structure especially the transverse sinus and the sigmoid sinus um, the, and the CSF egress is uh, encouraged to relax the cerebellum and uh, minimize the needle for retraction and, um, uh, and minimize the need for the retraction and under microscopic visualization the retractor is advanced along the junction of the uh, uh, along, along the junction of the tentorium and the petrous bone and I want to show you here uh, this is also picture from the book because we are not allowed as mentioned before picture from the book and the tentorium and the petrous bone and the erconide uh, so this uh, you can appreciate here so you can appreciate here the erconide is open to allow for the further CSF uh, uh, egress uh, and uh, to visualize the medial structure and the superior patricial vein complex and may obstruct the view of the trigeminal nerve and these veins may be coagulated and divided and the arterial compression uh, is the most co commonly due to the uh, uh, most commonly due to the loop of the superior cerebellar artery uh, but the, as I mentioned before, this is often bifurcated and care must be taken to visualize and mobilize all vascular structure uh, impinging on the root entry zone of the trigeminal nerve uh, as uh, in the figure you can see. And the Teflon pledget are used to hold these structure away from the root entry zone. And uh, Regarding, regarding, I want to tell you about little complication here. It's not done in my patient, but we were aware and we were afraid for that the, in microvascular decompression, even though the brain stem evoke potential and BEAR and the facial nerve monitoring help prevent hearing loss or the facial weakness, excessive traction on the cerebellum should be avoided and care should be taken to obliterate any exposed mastoid air cells with bone wax and dural closure should be watertight to avoid CSF leak. Uh, complications such as the inadvertent carotid puncture and formation of a cavernous carotid fistula can be avoided by accurate or uh, localization of a needle using a fluoroscopy and the loss of the corneal reflex and masseter weakness are seen in about 5% of the patient but are often temporary. Dysesthesia and anesthesia dolorosa are rare but dared, dared complication and risk can be mitigated by uh, tailoring the degree of lesioning and uh, toward loss of the pin prick discrimination rather than producing numbness. So this uh, thing definitely I want to I wanted to mention here because it was a very very highly important uh, in my humble opinion. I try to explain in front of you people, the, and I am trying so hard. Uh, and definitely, as I will get uh, more information regarding the, I I can re and uh, represent uh, these cases with the new style. I hope you will like it. If you like it, subscribe, share and support me. Thank you so much.